I mean, you're creating a lot of data. Your machines are creating a lot of data. Are you aware of this? That there is much more to be generated with this data. You can take advantage of this. And um, yeah, to define what you can do, you need to know a little bit more about all this data. I mean, you would like to create an app? That's easy. I have two specialists here. They will show you how to program an app, but also even more important, to employ it into your system that it's running. So please welcome on stage my two colleagues, Ingo Hecker and Jens Kautler. Thank you a lot. Thank you. So my name is Jens Kautler. And my name is Ingo Hecker. And we want to show you how easy it is to create an app on Mindsphere. Yeah. So, but you are not writing an app, you're doing an app because you want to have an app. Uh, you're not doing this because you want to uh, show I have an app. The most time it, you have a target to fulfill, you have a problem what you have to solve. So in this case, you have a use case. So we have a one use case uh, here for us. What is our use case? Our we are use talking case about is about beer. We are talking about beer. We are in Germany, we should talk about beer. And we are not talking about one bottle of beer, we are talking about a whole brewery. So here is our little brewery, a little bit empty at the moment. So what is important for the brewery? We need a tank of beer. And this tank of beer, we are pumping this beer in the first floor with a pump to our bottling machine. So we want to produce a lot of bottles of beer to can sell it then later. So in this case, uh, what could be the worst case what can happen in this uh, system? Yeah, Jens, as we talked the other day in the bar, the worst case is, of course, is if we run out of beer. So That's correct. In the bar, this is correct. But if you are responsible for the uh, whole system, for the brewery, running out of beer is not the worst case. The worst okay. case is running out of beer for a long time. And how this can happen? Uh, if you have a problem in your system, for example, you have a problem here in the pipe uh, or a closed valve, as you see here, then no beer is flowing anymore. This is bad for the bottling machine. No beer goes in the bottle. But it is must more, uh, much more important for the pump. But what you see here is the worst curse for a pump, a dry run pump. So pump gets warm, pump gets warmer, pump gets hot, and then it sometimes explodes. <laughs> and what happens then? You have then a broken pump. You have to replace the pump. If you have to buy a pump first or order the pump, you know, big companies, ordering process takes a long time. Repair it. So you have a lot of time, no beer in the bottles. And this is bad. <laughs> we should avoid the situation. Yes. How we can do this? Yeah, in order to avoid that, we probably should start with monitoring the pump. Now, pump systems can be very complex, but for our use case, just some of the parameters we can get from a pump, from the pump can be or are important to us. And those parameters are the pressure before and after the pump, the fluid flow, the motor current, and of course, the temperature, as you said. Fluid flow is important because we want to know how many, f how many beer we are pumping. But for us, in our use case, the temperature is important. We want to know, is this a normal temperature in the pump, or do we have a rising temperature, what we have to direct and to run to the pump and cool it, or whatever the direction is. OK, so as you see here, we are not we are not programmed anything at the moment, so we have here yeah. slides. But now we are changing it. We are now going live. And um, to be sure that we are having data in MindSphere, we already built this in Erlangen in our laboratory. So we have a lot of beer there, and we are pumping the beer from A to B. And you will see now, I can prove that we have this data live here in MindSphere. For this, we are opening the launchpad. This is the, let's say, entry point for MindSphere. Can I see the launchpad, please? We have then the entry point for uh, MindSphere. Uh, you have some components here. For example, the user management where you can, oh, we will see this later. We'll see the important data. for us now is the fleet manager. This is one possibility to see the data in MindSphere. In this case, um, we are opening the fleet manager. And here you see one, uh, here's the pump, what we are running in Erlangen right now. Uh, Erlangen, by the way, is in the south of Germany, if you don't know this, uh, close to Nuremberg. And here we are opening the pump. Let's see, go to the current time. Oh, you see here already something. So you see live data coming in here, 27th of April, 12.33. So we are right 
writing here data right now we're seeing data and you see the five data points we talked about you see here the pressure in front of the, before the pump after the pump the passage so we are pumping 249 cubic meter beer an hour so this is a big tank there in Erwangen so our colleagues love us and stuffing box temperature this is the most critical point the stuffing box temperature this is the temperature inside of the pump so and you see here also um, the normal behavior of the pump, but one part is here also not normal. Let's <laughs> zoom a little bit in. What happened? Jens, here? I'm sorry, I only see lines. How is uh, this connected to the beer? This is <laughs> not connected <laughs> to the beer. The lines are the normal behavior of the pump, but here you have an unusual behavior. Right? Let's zoom a little bit in here. The unusual behavior of the pump means ah. here the pump is not pumping anymore at this time. You see here zero passage, so zero beer are going through the, okay. the pipe, but you're seeing the rising temperature and you see the motor current is goes down because if you're pumping air, uh, you don't need so much uh, power than you pump water to something. Okay, so this gap shows the lack of beer, Absolutely. Right? This little line here shows our worst case. <laughs> okay, so we are now sure we have data live in MindSphere and now we can work with this data. Huh? First, you have to bring in the data. We did it. So now we should program an app. How you start to program an app? Uh, first, I have to know what I should program, Jens. Absolutely. So you are setting the requirements of the app. So as we know, our worst case is a, a pump dry running, getting warm. So at least I need the temperature in my app. And for this, the first requirements would be give me one data point. This is the temperature in this case as a graph, for example, that I can see the line is going up and uh, I have the visual view on a problem on my pump. Uh, but imagine we have maybe more than one pump in our brewery. So I also want to see all the different pumps in this app. And maybe I'm a big company. I have more than one brewery worldwide located. So I also want to see all the breweries in my app. So there are my three requirements for this brewery monitoring app. And we drawed it um, some days ago. So this is how our app should look like. So let's say one page. Uh, we see here the plants. We see maybe the plants on the map where they are. We see the pumps and the one data point what we have, uh, what we want to monitor, what is our critical part. OK, so now we know we have data. We know how the app should look like, how we start. Uh, first of all, this seems like that we can scale our business if we not only can monitor one pump, but also several pumps and several breweries. And I have prepared something, uh, but if I will before I will demonstrate it, we first of all have a look how we or what is necessary in order to program an app. And therefore, of course, you need either an integrated development environment, such as Visual Studio or Eclipse or something like that. Uh, but it's also enough if you just have a simple editor or could be also a more comfortable editor. I've chosen the Visual Studio code here uh, in combination with the build tools. Since you are always programming locally on your PC and with the build tools, you build the app on your PC. Does, now, it, does it mean uh, I can use what I'm already familiar with? So what I'm, I'm a programmer and I programmed the last uh, 10 years with one special tool. I can use this also to build a MindSphere app, right? Sure. Perfect. So MindSphere doesn't want to change developers' habits. So they can stay with their tools. They can use their tools, which they are using all the time. So Makes it easy. Yes. This is the simple. purpose here, what we show. What is it to have to do? It is easy. Yes. Use what you know. OK. OK. Now, I have opened the prepared application. As you can see, there are some files on the left which were necessary and the code on the right. And um, after I have finished the coding here, I had to build it. And in this concern, I have pre-built it to save some time. And now we have the app ready here, live on my PC. Now. Since we're talking MindSphere, we're talking cloud, the next step should be that we're putting the local app into the cloud. So you always can see the steps that we're doing here on this little screen. So the first part, developing and now building, and now we are pushing it from the local PC in our cloud to MindSphere. OK. And in order to do so, I have here uh, another console, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the Cloud Foundry CLI and Cloud Foundry covers a bunch of methods in, in order to bring the app to the cloud. But it's something more than this. But before, 
I explained this a little bit more detailed. I start to push the app to the cloud, which is just one simple command, which is CF, stands for Cloud Foundry. By the way, what you see is what you can open in your uh, normal Windows environment. This is the Windows uh, command environment here, right? Yes, yeah. this is the standard DMD. console. Yeah. Of course, you have to install uh, the, the Cloud Foundry commands. And if you are ready or finished with that, Cloud Foundry does a lot for you. It takes your local app, puts it into the right environment, like Java runtime environment or something like this, puts it into a container, and puts this container in, an, in a cloud resource. So I'm not a prepared. programmer. So but even a programmer has to take, don't have to take care about it. Yeah? Yeah. It does everything for you. You only have yes. to concentrate on your code, on what you're doing in your app. Push on, push, what is it? Um, CF push, Cloud Foundry push, yeah. and it's done. Yes, it's done. Perfect. Because you should, or developers should, focus on the implementation itself, and the coding, and the implementation of the business logic, of course, and not how to handle any cloud resources. Yeah. So Cloud Foundry does it for them. Is it already there? Because I see here yes. running. It's Mindset, is it already finished. running? Yes. So the app is right in the cloud and was started by Cloud Foundry. And what we get as a result, not only the success manage, uh, message, but also the address. The address is like, uh, like an URL, what I put in, in, uh, in my, in my Correct. browser, right? Correct. So if we are talking cloud applications, we need an address. So my job is done. Jens, now I would, you like, uh, would you like to show to us uh, so maybe you remember how the app what works. is the entry? What is the entry point in MindSphere? Is the Launchpad. In this case, we are opening the Launchpad, and we will see the app here. Launchpad open, and here is the. Oh, Ingo, it's not Where's there. Where is the app, Jens? Where is it? Ah, uh, it's not a mistake. It's not a failure. It's a feature. As we are really talking about security and the right and the roles, what an app can do. First, what you have to do is. Give the app the right to appear. Re register it in MindSphere. And this, you see here, a tool. You click on a tool called Cockpit for the Developer. So the Developer Cockpit. You open it, and you can create here a new app. We already prepared it here. That it, we saved a little bit of time. But you see, this is not a rocket science. You give it a name. You give it a description. You choose a nice picture. And here is the address, what, we found, what Cloud Foundry gave us, the Cloud Foundry app address. You type it in, then you click on the register, and now important, it is still not visible because you have to give the app rights, right to do something. So like if you want to have the app writing uh, the data from a pump or changing the data in MindSphere or deleting data, you have to give this app the rights. For this, you are still in the developer cockpit. You click on the app, what you have here, and you choose rights for this. Yeah. And since this sounds a little bit complex, why do I have to get rights or assign rights to the application? Imagine an app that you download to your smartphones. After downloading the applications, you're probably asked which resources the app is allowed to use, for example, the camera or your contacts. And this is the same procedure here. So we have to assign certain resources or the rights that the app can certain resources like time series data and I, so on. I remember, and the I remember last time when I uploaded uh, when I downloaded here from the app store something it asked me is this app uh, allowed to use your camera and this is the same this so more or less the same <laughs> important is if you have an app and you download something and it asks you can I use your camera and this is an app what it should not use camera say no please yeah this is important so take care of the security the user is also responsible for their own security. Same here. You give the rights what the app needs and not more. This is the normal habit to make it secure. So, but now we have the security here. And now let's go. And now we should see the app here ah, on the launch pad. Uh, Again, no. it's not there. Still it's not there. still not a problem. And it's still a feature. Because imagine you have a lot of people should use uh, this launch pad. And some are allowed to see the app and some not. The app is already here. You cannot see it. because. We have not assigned to you, as you are logged in here, the rights to the app. So, so this can you assign the rights can. to me? So and I show you how easy it is. How easy it is. You go here on Asset User Manager. So here is your Ingo Hacker. Ah, that's me. Yeah, I know. And uh, we click here on Edit. And here is the Brewery app. Let's. Um, we have more apps here available. Oh, Brewery. B R. 
here's the brewery app rights, and we can give you the user rights. It's okay, right? You don't need the admin rights. So user rights, we click in here, and you see here appearing the brewery app. So now, the next time we are opening the launchpad, it should here hopefully appear. <laughs> Yeah, it appears. Ah. The beer bottle, now the beer glass appears. So now we have the app on your lounge bed and you can That's use it. That's great. Now yeah, let's have a look. Let's have it. a look at it. Test it. <laughs> you wrote it, you can test it. <laughs> so now we see here the really nice ah, Oh, you have to resign it. Sometimes uh, you have to reassign here. Ah, so great. It's a little bit looks like what we did. Uh, we have the breweries, we have. but. Bingo. Oh, oh, hey. There is no data. There are no data. We, we, we said we need the data from the pump. You remember this yes. pump data with this uh, temperature. I have an idea where the, where the error is. And therefore, unfortunately, we have to look. This is not a feature, right? No, I'm sorry. That's but you see here, we tested the app. It is not working. Now we have a problem. So we have to go back. There are two reasons what could happen. I give not the app the rights to see, to, to see the um, uh, API, so the data of the pump or somebody, something is wrong in the code. What are you doing? Uh, unfortunately, obviously, I made a mistake when programming this time series data read. And in order to fix it, I have to have a look at the developer documentation. Because uh, is this documentation is public for everybody. Yes, it's public. So maybe you can uh, open it on your app, uh, on your phone, and look for the mistake and tell us. Yeah? But I guess we did this now five days. Uh, you will find this mistake really fast, right? It was a long day last night, so I misspelled it. Mindsphere.io developer? <laughs> or Yeah. So here we go. And what you see here is uh, an overview of what the Mindsphere documentation provides to developers. It's not only the description of the APIs, which we need also to fix the app, uh, but it's also about um, demos and tutorials and all the stuff you probably would need in order to program an app. Now, in our concern, we have to have a look at the APIs and especially at the time series API, which I have used to get the data of the pump. Okay. And here we go. So this is the call where it says time series Entity and property set name. Is this what you what you code? What you copy now in your code, right? But well, this is the description how I should have coded ah, okay. it. Yeah. So, and now I have to compare it to what I did. Ah, yeah, I see. So I have the entity ID and the aspect, which is the pump. But latest is wrong because I wanted to get the latest data. However, this endpoint wasn't there. So now I have changed the code. Uh, uh, only for my understanding, um, what you did, you coded too much code, right? Yeah. Ah. I thought there was that latest endpoint because I wanted to get the latest data. However, it wasn't there. So I have to delete okay. it. So now, in order to make it available again, I have to build it. Yeah. And uh, then we have to push it to the cloud again, of course. So you're creating now an executable file, what we can again then upload to Mindsphere, right? I'm sorry? You're creating an uh, executable file, what yes. we can upload that what, to what Mindsphere? Yes, what I do now is I, I um, built the code again so that I have the updated app here locally on my PC. Okay. And then again, we have to do it uh, to push it into the cloud again with a CF push. But we have to really we have a shortcut here in the process. This is really a this is really a really a good thing. So as you remember, we started developing, pushing it, and then we did all the steps what we have in green here. So we registered the app, we gave it the rights, we gave the rights to Ingo, uh, and all the steps we don't have to do anymore because we have a shortcut now. Is it already on the launchpad? You can change it here on the fly and test it uh, directly after pushing again. So this is really makes it easy also for me if I'm. For you as a programmer, we push something, we change it, we make a new feature, we ingesting a new data point or whatever, and we don't have to go the whole process. It's much faster here on the shortcut. So correct. Oh, we and already this saves us some time, of course, 
We and didn't plan to yeah. build it again. And you see here, we are doing this live. This is not on PowerPoint. You see here, we are building the app live here, 92%. Um, we are pushing it live. We see it live. It's not a show on the PowerPoint. So this is important. And last day, we did something wrong, right? Uh, we had a, a backup, so we used the backup. Now it's not wrong. We are really so. can use it live here. So we are doing again the push. Let's see if push. And now it's preparing the whole environment again for us, right? Yes, again, the same process. Takes the app, brings it together with the runtime environment, prepares some space in the cloud, and takes the container and puts it there, and then it's available. And then you could show us again if it's now done. Yes. Right, it says finished. Now we can test it again? Yeah. Uh, let's now see. it should work. Let's go to Mindsphere. Here was it in the launch pad again. This is again our entry point to Mindsphere. We have still here the brewery uh, uh, picture. Click on the brewery picture and ah. woo, I see it. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, you have here the different breweries as we saw before. But I already see data now. The different breweries. And you see here also you can zoom in in here your. And you, just, you broke it really nicely. Thank you very see much. See the pump here? <laughs> the one pump. And here we have the pump data. OK, here's important. You see here, again, we have a problem with the pump here. Now we see it live here. You see the pump is not pumping anymore. And you see here our critical data point. So the temperature, this is the temperature. Stuffing box temperature rises and rises and rises. And I already have an idea for the next version of this app. Tell is me. It, is it possible to uh, make a threshold or something like that, that we send an SMS to my mobile phone that I don't have to be on my screen every time and see this on, on my mobile phone? No. No? Yes. yes. Of course it is possible. And yesterday you said no. <laughs> <laughs> you said yes. <laughs> what happened this night? Too much beer, maybe. So um, again, you see, we succeeded here, our development. So we are now ready to hand it over to somebody else. But we developed it. We pushed it. We made all the re uh, registration and uh, allocation the rights and give it to a specific user. We tested it, and we succeeded. Now we are ready to hand it over to the next process step. So the next process step, what is it? Yeah, the next process step is to hand over the application to an operator, which could uh, bring it to the store. Why to the store? At the end of the day, of course, we want to earn some money. So as you said in the beginning, there is a reason why we are implementing an app. And not only to solve a problem, problem but also to earn money. And in order to do so, again, transfer it to the operator, and the operator can publish it to the store where it can be sold to everybody of you. So to the store or to a specific customer, right? I don't or have to put it on the store no, if I have, don't have to. for one specific brewery of my, of my clients. You can do so as well. OK, so if you are now, let's say, interested to create your own app, yeah, join us in this journey. Yeah? Here are a lot of people around that can help you. We have an own um, uh, Mindsphere Lounge. We have partners that can support you in, in the whole journey from interesting data to programming some. We have a lot of uh, information in the internet. Again, uh, developer.mindsphere.io or documentation.mindsphere.io is the address. Really easy. Everybody can see it. Can see how easy it is, what to do. And uh, as you see here on the booth, we have these little cubes. Everywhere you see a cube, there's a Mindsphere um, connected. So like an app is running or a machine is connected. Go to these people and, and ask them, what is there? Show me this. And there are so cool apps you will imagine. And by the way, go to our partners. They help you also. So with this, we can also say, Join us in this journey, in this digitalization journey, and make the great apps together with us. Thanks. Thank you. All right, a big hand of applause to the two brewmasters of Siemens. You guys have been brewing beer now for all week. How do you feel? I mean, I can hear there is some crack in the voice. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How do you feel? How uh how, what is your experience, Hanover I mean, Messe? Of course, since we were motivated by beer and so on, so we had to taste it. But 
honestly, I'm a little bit exhausted now. Exhausted, I can imagine. Not just because of brewing beer, also because of you've been talking to a lot of interested customers coming here to the Fairbus, That's learning true. more about Mindsphere and the possibility what it offers. Jens, for you, what's your best of experience? My best experience is, uh, we are talking about beer here, but when you see in the Mindsphere launch or somewhere else, there are so many interesting use cases. Uh, everybody has idea what to do with this data, what you, what you can take out of the data. And this is a really uh, a start of a really nice journey. And we will see a lot of really apps, apps, apps are doing really great things and creating value out of this data. This is what I like. Multiple possibilities which are being offered in the future yep. with Mindsphere and what it brings along. So thank you very much to the two of you. Thank you that you have been here every day in super fit condition, brewing beer for everybody. Really cool. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Big hand of applause to you guys again.